Hello, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today, I'm thrilled to take you on a drama, fantasy, and romance film called Meet Joe Black. Spoilers ahead. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. One night, Bill Parrish struggles to sleep as a voice whisper to him. The following morning, his daughter, Alison, shares her grand ideas for his 65th birthday celebration. Bill expresses dislike over parties, but his younger daughter, Susan, advises him to relax. When a helicopter arrives, Bill's associate and Susan's boyfriend, Drew, steps out and proceeds to talk business with Bill. Bill mentions hearing a voice telling him, yes, last night, and Drew takes it as a sign for them to take the merger deal they'll be discussing. They then board the helicopter, along with Allison's husband, Quince. During the ride, Bill tells Susan that he likes Drew as a business partner, but he wants to make sure of what Susan thinks of him. When Susan doesn't give him a direct answer, he comments that he doesn't see passion between them. He advises her to be open to possibilities because lightning could strike. When they get to the city, the men head to their office while Susan goes to a coffee shop. Behind her, a man talks loudly at the payphone, encouraging someone to pursue a degree. Susan finds the man's supportiveness sweet. The man then sits on the bar and apologises to Susan for being loud on the phone, clarifying that he was talking to his sister, who just broke up with her boyfriend. The man comments that it never lasts between men and women, but adds that he's a one-girl type and even jokes that Susan might be the one. He then diverts the conversation to Susan, who shares that she's a doctor. Meanwhile, Bill enters his office, but suddenly feels a sharp pain in his chest. The voice tells him, yes, and when Bill responds that he didn't ask a question, the voice teases that he knows what the answer is for. At the coffee shop, Susan and the young man enjoy each other's company. The man claims he's doing pro bono jobs to do some good, but he intends to get a better job when he starts a family. He proudly declares that he'll give up doing what he loves for the right woman. Susan notes that it'll be hard to find the right woman, and he replies that lightning could strike, catching her curiosity. When the two leave, the man admits that he likes her, and Susan confesses the same thing. They soon part ways without learning each other's names. They both turn to the other at different times as they walk away, but they hesitate and continue onward. At the last moment that the man turns, Susan is gone. Before he could take another step, he gets hit by cars. That evening, Allison discusses plans for the party, but Bill remains uninterested. The voice then tells Bill that he's at the front door, so Bill asks his maid Lillian to check if anyone is outside. When Lillian returns, she tells Bill that he has a visitor. Hesitantly, Bill heads to the library to meet his visitor. While looking for his visitor, the voice continues in his head. He spots an odd figure behind a bookshelf and asks who he is, and the voice explains that he's been around for eternity but wants to look around before taking Bill. He's heard that Bill is competent and wise, so the voice wants him to be his guide. In return, he offers Bill more time. As Bill realises that he's about to die, the figure steps into the light and he bears the same face as the young man in the coffee shop. Bill deduces that he is death, and Death explains that he took a young man's body to blend in. Bill clarifies that he'll be Death's guide to the world, and after he's satisfied, he'll take Bill. Lillian interrupts their conversation, and Death invites himself to their dinner. Bill refuses to have him at his table, but Death stresses that he cannot refuse. The two join the rest at dinner, and Bill introduces Death as his friend, Joe Black. When Drew asks if Joe is in business, he simply explains that he and Bill have an arrangement. Susan arrives and is stunned to see the man from the coffee shop. When Drew asks where Joe will be staying, he claims that he'll be staying in Bill's house and Bill doesn't refuse. Susan asks what he's doing there, noting that he's acting differently from earlier that day. Joe explains that he wasn't himself that morning and Susan is disappointed. After leaving the dinner table, Joe explains to Bill that Susan met the young man whose body he's inhabiting. Bill shows him to a guest room where Joe will be staying and leaves him there. Later, Joe wanders around and ends up in the kitchen. He introduces himself to the staff and becomes curious about peanut butter. The butler gives him a spoon to taste and Joe happily eats it.
he reaches the indoor pool where Susan is swimming. Susan deduces that Joe is in the middle of a big deal with her father, given that Bill invited him to dinner and to stay in his house. She's disappointed since she thought he was a regular guy that morning. Joe asks her if she loves Drew, but Susan tells him it's none of his business. Joe apologises for making her uneasy, admitting that he's not used to people. He shares that his duties have made him so busy that he never had time for anything else. The next morning, Bill heads to Joe's room and admits that he's overwhelmed with what to do, but Joe assures him that he'll get through it. Joe is delighted that he was treated like a person last night, but warns Bill that their deal will abruptly end if his true identity is revealed. Bill promises to keep it a secret as long as his family doesn't get involved. When they get to the office building, Joe insists on joining him during a board meeting. While Quince happily greets Joe, Drew isn't pleased to see him. Drew opens the board to vote on accepting the merger with John Bontecu. However, Bill notes that he started the company to spread the unbiased truth to the world, while Bontecu is more focused on profits. He refuses to be affiliated with such a person. Therefore, he declines the merger. Drew argues that the company needs growth, but Bill ends the meeting. To give Bill some time alone, Joe visits Susan at the hospital, but she stresses that she's too busy. An elderly Jamaican woman looks at Joe and gets scared. Joe responds in her dialect, assuring her that everything will be all right. When Susan takes the woman's daughter to the admissions table, the woman figures that Joe is death, but he assures her that he's on holiday. She then asks Joe to take her pain away, but he insists that it's not her time yet. Taking pity on her, Joe tells her to close her eyes and shows her a vision that comforts her. Later, Joe joins Bill for lunch. Bill reminisces about his wife and jokes that Joe has probably heard something similar before, but Joe encourages him to tell him more. Suddenly, Drew walks in and hopes to speak to Bill in private. Bill claims that there are no secrets between him and Joe, so Drew asks Bill about his decision that morning. When Drew argues about taking the merger, Bill vehemently declares that he doesn't want to discuss it. After he leaves, Bill rants that he doesn't want anyone taking his life's work and turning it into something he didn't want, hence why he declined the merger. That evening, Quince approaches Bill and assures him that he understands his decision. He offers alternative options for merger prospects that he can propose next week, and Bill mentions that the time will be up to Joe. Quince then encourages Drew to forget about Bontecu and offers to share the proposal he's working on. When he mentions that Bill said the time for the meeting would be up to Joe, Drew becomes suspicious. At dinner, Bill offers a toast to his family and reminisces about when his daughters were young. He asks them to join him for dinner again the following day, then kisses his daughters. When the butler offers Joe the meal, he asks for peanut butter instead. Susan appreciates the idea of having comfort food. Joe then mentions Susan's patient, assuring her that the woman is grateful for the care she's giving her. When Drew makes snarky comments, Susan explains that Joe visited the hospital earlier, angering him further. After dinner, Drew hurriedly leaves. Susan catches up to him and asks if he'll be joining them tomorrow night. Drew refuses and stresses that he doesn't like her interactions with Joe, but she defends that she likes talking to him. Drew concludes that their relationship isn't as good as he thought after all. When he leaves, Susan finds Joe watching them. Susan urges him to tell her what he's doing with Bill, but Joe doesn't reply. She becomes curious about him and wonders how a man like him is alone in the world. The two lean close to each other, but Joe pulls away, remembering Bill's insistence not to involve his family. The following day, Drew gathers the board members without Bill and Quince. He shares that Bontecu is sweetening the deal to merge with their company, and he's willing to take the company without Bill. The board thinks he's taking it too far, but Drew insists that Joe is influencing Bill, yet they don't know who Joe is. Drew's assistant invites Quince in, and Drew urges him to tell the board what Bill thought about the timing for their proposal. Quince innocently mentions that Bill said the timing is up to Joe. That evening, the family gathers again for dinner, but without Drew. Allison presents two cakes for his party, but Bill insists that he doesn't like cakes. 
His comments hurt Allison's feelings, so Bill apologizes and asks Allison to choose for him. This only stresses Allison further since she wants to throw him the best birthday party, but Bill doesn't seem to care. Bill happily eats one of the cakes to comfort her, and the mood lightens. Afterward, Susan and Joe head to the library, where they share a kiss. Joe is at first confused by the gesture, yet becomes mesmerized by his feelings for Susan. Bill finds them, so Susan leaves with a smile. The next day, Bill and Joe head to his office, where his secretary tells him about a board meeting that he wasn't aware of. Bill heads to the conference room where Drew proposes Bontecu's new offer, but Bill refuses to hear it. Bill berates his board members for discussing business matters with Bontecu, whom he already stated he has no interest in doing business with. Drew then demands Bill to explain who Joe is and how he's affiliated with him. When Bill doesn't answer, Drew stresses that the board should be assured that he's not entrusting company decisions to someone they don't know. Bill remains silent, so Drew proposes to have Bill forcefully retire upon his 65th birthday. All board members except for Quince and Eddie agree, so Drew declares that they will announce his retirement after his birthday celebration. With Bill no longer the chairperson, Drew brings up the Bontecu merger to the board again. Bill accepts the board's decision with grace and motions to leave. Joe tells Drew cryptically that his identity will be revealed at the right time. When they leave, Eddie tries to convince Bill that they can still fight Drew's proposals, but Bill isn't interested. Meanwhile, Quince confronts Drew for getting Bill fired, but Drew simply thanks him for providing him the information that helped him convince the board. Drew privately reveals that Bontecu intends to break the company apart and sell it to the highest bidder. This will ensure a large profit for them. When Quince threatens to expose him, Drew reminds him that he technically helped get his father-in-law fired. At Bill's mansion, Susan finds Joe at the indoor pool. The couple begins to flirt, which ends in a kiss. Susan starts removing his clothes, and they move to Joe's room to share an intimate moment. Before Susan leaves, Bill witnesses them kissing. Bill gets angry at Joe for forming a relationship with his daughter. Bill asks why he even chose him, so Joe explains that Bill's characteristics and success are useful. Joe claims he wants the thrill of life, and Bill laughs at him for defying nature. This doesn't please Joe, so he reminds Bill of who he truly is. But Bill isn't threatened by what he can do anymore. The next day, Joe visits the hospital with flowers, but Susan's not yet at work. Meanwhile, Susan heads to Bill's home to look for Joe, but he's not there. Susan giddily admits to her father that she's infatuated with Joe, angering Bill. Susan questions why Joe isn't good enough for her when Bill trusts him. Bill declares that Joe won't be staying for long and warns her that being with him is dangerous. Still, Susan insists that she loves him. At the hospital, Joe visits the Jamaican woman instead. She figures that he's in love with Susan, but scolds him for not telling Susan who he really is. The woman sees that Joe is confused and offers to join him when he takes her. Still, Joe wants to stay with the living because he's not lonely anymore. She advises him to leave his vacation while it's still a happy memory since the living also gets lonely. Acknowledging her loneliness and pain, Joe takes her soul to let her rest. Joe returns home and tells Bill that his adventure has served its purpose. Bill claims that he's ready to go, so Joe promises that they'll do it after his birthday party. The next day, while the party is being prepared, Joe approaches Quince, who's drowning his sorrows at the bar. Confused about love, Joe asks about Quince's relationship with Alison. Quince shares that he was a loser before he met Alison, but he knows she loves him because she knows his worst side and accepts him. Quince then confesses that he told Drew and the board that Bill depended on Joe. He also mentions Drew and Bontico's plan to tear down the company and sell it. Joe advises Quince to tell Bill the truth, confident that he'd forgive him. Meanwhile, Bill approaches Allison, who's still busy organising the party. He asks why she's doing this, and Allison says that it's because she, and everyone else, loves him. 
Alison assures him that he's a wonderful father, but he laments that he's not been the same father as he is with Susan. Alison doesn't care that Susan is his favourite because she still feels loved, and that's what's important. The two hug, and Bill thanks her for everything she's done. That evening, the party begins. Susan arrives and confesses her love to Joe, but he tells her he'll leave tonight. Joe admits that he doesn't want to leave because he's also in love. Susan begs him not to, assuring him that she can wait for him to tell her his secrets because she wants to be with him. In Bill's study, Quince confesses to him, and Bill understands that he only meant well. Joe walks in, and Quince thanks him for encouraging him to confess. Before Quince leaves, Bill tells him to have Drew sent to the party to talk to him. When they're alone, Bill rants about how he's at the brink of death, his company is about to be destroyed, and his daughter is in love with death. Joe admits his love for Susan and intends to take her with him. Despite Bill refusing to allow him to ruin his daughter's life, Joe is adamant about his decision. Bill lectures him that taking whatever he wants is not love. Instead, Joe is merely indulging himself. For Bill, Love is taking responsibility and earning trust while ensuring that their loved one will not be hurt. Still, Joe argues that Susan wants to be with him, but Bill stresses that Susan doesn't know who he is and where he's taking her. Bill points out that Joe could have taken her without telling him, so he assumes that Joe knows he's wrong. He then challenges Joe to tell Susan the truth. Joe heads back to the party and reunites with Susan. Seeing him hesitant, Susan recounts their conversation in the coffee shop when she told him he'd have trouble finding the right woman, but now she's there. She assures him that he's the right man for her. Realising that Susan loves the man from the coffee shop and not him, Joe kisses her, and Susan notes that it feels like a goodbye. She finally realises Joe is not the same man she met in the coffee shop. He tells her it doesn't matter what he is and leads her to realise his true identity. Susan refuses to believe he is death and simply accepts that he is Joe. He declares his love for her and thanks her for loving him. With that, Joe leaves a tearful Susan. Later, Bill calls Eddie and the board members, telling them to listen in. Finally, Drew arrives, thinking that Bill called him to make amends. Instead, Bill berates him for plotting to bring the company down. Drew denies this and attempts to insult Joe for poisoning Bill's mind. Joe then declares that he's an IRS agent who's investigating Bontecu. He claims that Bill has been cooperating with him and they've collected evidence that Drew is guilty of an undisclosed conflict of interest. They offer not to arrest him if he confesses his true dealings with Bontecu to the board and resigns. Drew accepts, but is surprised when Eddie suddenly speaks from the phone, revealing that the board has heard his confession and will be reinstating Bill as chairman. Finally, Bill joins his party and the guests sing him a happy birthday. Joe watches from afar as Bill makes a speech about life and wishes that everyone in the party leads a life without wanting more. He then hugs Quince and Allison before approaching Susan. Seeing her in tears, Bill assures Susan that she's given his life meaning. He tells her not to worry about him because he has no regrets. Realising what he means, Susan embraces him, telling him she loves him, and she also has no regrets. Bill and Susan then have a father-daughter dance for the last time. After the dance, Bill urges her to watch the fireworks while he rests. Bill then walks up to Joe, who wipes away his tears. Despite being against Joe's relationship with her, Bill thanks him for inspiring Susan. Joe thanks him for the journey and for being there for him. Susan looks up and watches them cross the bridge up the hill. She runs to catch up to them and sees Joe walking back alone. Joe looks confused, unsure of how he got there. When he mentions seeing her last after they left the coffee shop, Susan realises that he's back to being the man she met that day. Susan cries as she accepts that her father is gone, and she asks the man what to do now. He tells her that it'll come to them, and Susan smiles. The young couple holds hands as they head back to the party. <laughs>